Hey horse lovers, welcome back to Free Spirit Equestrian. So today we are gonna be very busy training and transforming horses. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of a day in the life of my training sessions with my horses and just some of the exercises that we're gonna focus on today. I know I've been getting a lot of questions about that and what I do with my horses when I'm schooling them. So I'm gonna show you. So right here I have Mr. Olaf. He is the first horse of the day. So we're gonna do a little grooming session and then we'll head out to the outdoor arena and begin. He is dirty, obviously. And he is rocking a brand new halter. One of my students bought it for him. Thank you, Piper. It looks so good on him. I absolutely love the colors. Okay, buddy, let's groom you up. Olaf is a really fun pony. He's very athletic, extremely talented. He's more forward. So we're gonna focus on some exercises that really help him think about where his feet are, proprioception, how he's using his body and speed control. So I love forward horses. Speed isn't a bad thing. It's just managing it and teaching the horse how to balance themselves. I've had Olaf for about a year and a half going on two years now, and he is getting close to graduating my program. I will be selling him sometime soon. So we're just doing some tuning up, you know, cause winters, obviously you can't do as much as even though we still stay in work all winter and we're very busy. I just want to do a few weeks of training with him before I decide to list him for sale. Yeah, his favorite thing to do is jump. Luffy, you are a dirt ball. I'm sorry, but you're super dirty. hair all in my mouth because they're still shutting. So actually I'm going to do some tail circles with him first. I always do a little bit of body work before I exercise or train the horses just to loosen them up and I will pick the exercises according to the horse. So Olaf just and all horses like carry tension. He carries a little bit of tension in his hind so I'll do a little bit of tail work with him, some tail circles, some tail pulls, and then I'll do a few hyoid releases as well. So what I'm going to do here is just do some tail lifts slowly we won't show his butt hole <laughs> and you want to just like set your hand under the dock of the tail gently now some horses are resistant to it i can feel he has a little bit of tension in here and i'll just lift up and sometimes you can go higher and slowly and do this 10 times before we head out i actually want to talk about equipment really quick so this is Olaf's new bridle. He has a padded mono crown, and then he has a padded nose band, and my nose band is really loose. It's really important to me not to have a tight nose band so the horse can mobilize their jaw. For me, the nose band is simply aesthetic. It doesn't serve a functional purpose, and I am a big believer in that. <laughs> and then, okay, so I do ride with a bit and bitless as well. I do that because I want horses to have education in both areas. The bit I use is a lozogen's bit, and I'll show you once I take it out of his mouth afterwards. And they're my favorite bit if I'm gonna be using one. But I do a ton of bitless riding as well. Today I chose to use a bit. <laughs> Your forelock is crazy. Today I chose to use a bit because we're gonna be doing a lot of turning and those kind of exercises, and I didn't want the side pole to be like rubbing on his face as we're turning. Today I'm riding in my Wintech that I converted to wool. So it used to have care in the panels, which is basically airbags, but I converted it to wool and it's actually a decent little schooling saddle. And then I'm riding in my ECP quilted saddle pad. I like these because they have four chambers if you wanted to add foam into them. So that's really nice. And as you can see, I didn't put my elastics in the girth strap because I feel like it rubs the horse certain ways, but I'm using a contoured girth and then a fleece cover just to help with any types of rubbing and preventing that. And Olaf seems to really like it. As you can see here, we have our exercises set up in the outdoor arena and we're gonna go over them and talk about what they do for us. All right, we just got out to the outdoor arena and we're gonna do our warm up exercises and I'll be able to show you a little bit about what we do and I'll explain. The first warm up exercise that we're going to do is snaking over poles. So, what this exercise helps with is strengthening the pelvic area and the hindquarters, and it really helps to promote balance and symmetry in the front end of the horse as well. So, it's overall a good exercise for almost any horse, any level, and it really just gets them circulating and loosens up their shoulder. It also allows them to focus on their control and their balance 
and you want to go over these poles at an angle not straight see how we're going over them at an angle that's what really helps now the second exercise we're going to do is basically figure eight over the poles. Now with both of these exercises, it's really great to lift them with little cavalettis. However, I don't have any risers or cavalettis out here and I need to get some. But anyways, what this exercise helps with is basically getting the horse to be stable. It really stretches out their pectoral muscles as well and loosens up the hind end while strengthening it at the same time. So as you can see, I was walking over them in angles and I'm gonna show you this exercise with the other horses as well. Another thing to really practice is rein back. So backing up using good posture, this is such a strength building exercise. Backing up is one of the hardest things a horse can do. So this is really good for loosening up the horse's back and just relieving any type of stiffness that they may have. So backing up is such a wonderful exercise to execute and I try to do it with all of my sessions. And then basically we just did some walk trot canter. He was a pretty good boy. He was a little fresh today, but he was so well behaved and I had a lot of fun working with him. Okay, so it went pretty well. He's a good boy. He's honestly a lot of fun to ride. He's just, you know, he has a motor and he likes to go and he's a pony, so he has pony strides, but they're fun. They're not super choppy. They're just shorter, right? And it's not as forgiving. It's not that the pony strides aren't comfortable. It's that they're quicker and not as forgiving. So they're just more difficult, but you have to be able to adjust as a rider to different kinds of horses and movement. But yeah, just getting back into really the swing of things. I think it went pretty well. Okay, horse lovers, we do have a couple thank yous. Thank you so much, Julie, for these wheel checks for the trailer. Really appreciate it. And thank you, Wanderlust Morgans, for this awesome shedding tool. I really appreciate it. Also, I just want to say thank you so much, Kim, for this gorgeous candle. It smells so good. I love it. And for this amazing Appaloosa bracelet. I absolutely love it. Thank you. If you want to support Free Spirit Equestrian, you can order us something off our Amazon wish list. Link in the description. I have a couple shampoos on there for Penelope. I would love to incorporate a bath time video so you can see her get a little scrubbed down. Also put a horse scale on there because I've always wanted one, but it's really expensive. Obviously, I'm not really expecting anybody to get it, but a girl can dream. I just think it'd be really fun to weigh the horses and myself just to make sure we're all staying on track and to be able to record it. And I think it would be really fun to do a how much do you think my horses weigh video and like give away prizes and stuff. So that's on the wish list too. And I just really appreciate all of your support, horse lovers. Thank you so much. All right, Penelope is going out for the day. He's a good girl. Little pig butt. Go, girl, go! <laughs> You're taking a little nap after some food. Kawa. What do you think, my little wolf dog? Oh, good boy. Are you a good baby? Are you such a good boy? Are you such a good boy? Kawa. Are you such a good boy? You such a good boy. All right, horse lovers, now we have Mr. Mushu, a.k.a. Smooshu. So we are just going to go out to the arena and do some in-hand work today. He is a fluffy little monster, aren't you? Aren't you, Smooshy? He's like, give me a treat. No. So Mushu is very fluffy, and he is going to get clipped soon. Yes, professionally clipped. <laughs> but not the mustache. So I am not into clipping horses, really. It's just a personal preference, but he is so fluffy and we're doing, you know, a lot of groundwork and he's going to start under saddle in June. And I just feel like he's overheating. So we're just going to clip him to help him out. So obviously I'm going to keep his like mustache, his mustache, his whiskers, <laughs> and um, obviously his feather too. But Mushi, what are you doing? Nope. Um, but yeah, I just think this will really help him and I'll make a video. I can't wait to see what he looks like without all the fluff. You ready for that? All right, let's head out, boo. You're something else. Blue shoe. Blue shoe.
So with Mushu, I'm doing similar exercises that I did with Olaf, of course, just not under saddle. So we're doing them in hand. So for him, this is really great because it's going to not only strengthen him and help with his posture, but just expose him to the poles and having to lift over them and just trying something different. Instead of just walking around or lunging, we're actually doing an exercise that's effective. I'm literally trying to set up the tripod and I can't. Just let me. You are crazy. You're like literally fogging up my glasses. Oh my gosh, this horse. This horse. Okay, we have to try to show them our training. Moosh, you big old chunk. Moosh. Now I am doing the figure eight serpentines with Mushu, again, just to help him get a little bit more flexible and more stability. And I think it's great to do these exercises before starting them under saddle so that he's getting stronger and stronger and not just learning and exposing him to different things, which is important too, but actually strengthening his body. So now we're just gonna hand walk for a second and I'm gonna ask him to rein back as well. Obviously we're doing this to unlock any kind of stiffness or tension and strengthen him. But of course I want this to transfer to him under saddle as well as far as a cue and a command. And he did really nice. That was actually really nice backing up for him. I'm so proud. All right, now we're gonna do some groundwork on the lunge line. Also, I ordered him a saddle, so it should be arriving in the next few weeks. So then we'll be doing more saddle training and I can't wait to ride in it this June. All right, so we're just gonna start off walking. And I'm kind of walking and stepping with him as well. Good boy, Mushi. Oh, yeah, I mean, come in. You said good boy means stop, right? <laughs> you good boy. A little chunk. That body clip's gonna help you, then we can do more cardio. When I'm training Mushu, we do a little bit of groundwork on the lunge line every session, but I make sure to incorporate different training activities as well like we were doing the in hand work or we might focus on mounting or whatever the case may be also i put the cones there purposely in the way because i want him to realize where he's moving and where his feet are and if we're ever on a trail ride i want him to notice that something is there and look at it so instead of moving the cones i just kind of purposely put them in the way just so he can learn to maneuver around them so we do some walk track canter on the lunge line and he's gotten a lot better he's going to get even stronger as we continue to um, intensify our training mushu really is willing and he has such a great disposition his canter looks so comfortable and i'm very excited to see what he's going to feel like under saddle mushu was such a good boy and now we're going to go get zazu and go for a ride i just groomed him a little bit so we're going to tack up and then head to the outdoor arena <laughs> all right Okay, so we're heading down to the outdoor arena and I am riding him with a bit today. So I rotate between bitless and a bit with him again, because I think both are important. If I had a preference, I would choose bitless all the time, but I want them to have an education with both. And again, I only use the lazogen fits. Here is an example of the lazogen bits that I use. They're on Amazon and you can just Google and usually find them. I really do like them. And here we have Zazu looking all snazzy in his English getup. He is so cute and sweet. I'm so thankful that we crossed paths. He's amazing. I'm actually writing him English for the first time today. Zazu has been settling in here really well. I've been having a blast riding him, getting him into shape, and just having so much fun. I've had a couple of my students ride him, and he's going to be doing his first official lesson this week. And hopefully we can get out on the trail sometime soon so I can test ride him out there. Right now with Zazu, it's mainly about just getting him used to being here, which he's been really great about everything. I've had fantastic rides on him and just getting him back into shape and getting him stronger and just a little more of the arena etiquette, like getting him used to getting in the corners, not slowing down by the gate, just those really simple things. And then, of course, I will do my sitting trot with him. He is a gated horse. He's 13 years old. He's a Tennessee walking cross, Tennessee walking horse cross. And... I am going to post only because 
we are going to be going to some shows and I don't even care that he's gated. We're not going to go to gated shows. I'm not into any of that. We're just going to go to the local shows. They're like pleasure ones and we're just going to have fun. So I'm going to post because in the classes I'm going to post. And also I think it's important to get off his back because he does trot. So he'll do his gait and he'll trot as well. So yeah, I've just been having a blast with him. It's just lovely to have a horse that is safe and quiet and comfortable that I can just focus on the little things and just enjoy him. And I think he's going to be so amazing in the program. And also I can't wait to get him out on the trails. Like I was saying too, that's going to be so fun to see what he's like. And as you can see, I am doing the serpentines here, and this is just going to help him to build some strength and just loosen up and get him fit. He really is just the sweetest horse. He is just the full package. I mean, he's beautiful. He's short and stout. He just makes you feel comfortable. Like he'll still go forward if you ask, but he's not too quick. I mean, I just couldn't ask for a better horse right now. And I'm so, so grateful that he's here. I can't even explain it. So now I'm gonna do the figure eight pulls with him as well. So you can see there we're walking over an angle and you wanna do a little bit of a bend. So he is a little bit stiff in his turns, which makes sense because he is gated and it is a little bit more challenging for the gated horses to do a ton of turns and bends because they are designed to go in a straight line to go from point A to point B. Now that does not mean that they are not really good at bending or that they can't be. It's just that they are built different and it takes a little bit of a different approach and some conditioning. So that's what we're doing right now is getting him stronger, getting him more flexible and getting him to understand where to place his feet. This also helps to lift the pectoral muscles and to stretch them out because they don't have the same momentum at a trot when you're walking over ground poles. And if we were to lift the ground poles with say the risers, that would be even more of a workout. Okay, so now I just transitioned him upward into the canter. I honestly love his canter. It is so much fun, especially for being gated. I mean, it just feels so smooth and balanced. And of course, getting in the corners is what we're working on because I don't think he's done a ton of arena work. So that's just going to take some time. And that's what I'm excited about. We have something to work on and look forward to and continue to improve and progress with. But it's very rhythmic. You do have to ask him a little bit to just stay in it, but not much. He pretty much is just like, okay, yeah, you want a canter, let's go. And then I am gonna go on my two point for a little bit, just get off his back and just practice that because in lessons, we like to strengthen our core and we will be two pointing as well. And I just want to get him used to everything that we'll be doing in lessons too. So that was another transition. As you could see, I opened up my inside rein and I asked with my outside leg to ask him to move forward and transition upward into the canter and he did great. When I'm riding and training horses, I want to try to be as soft and subtle as I possibly can. But of course, when you're riding a new horse or a green horse or training a horse in general, sometimes you have to exaggerate your cues a little bit so that the horse has an understanding. But overall, Zazu is just wonderful. And the things that we have to work on are very simple and we will just continue to condition him. So many people out there struggle to find a horse that's a good fit for them. They end up purchasing the wrong horse or they don't know what to look for. And what that essentially does is it wastes time, money, resources, and you can experience emotional heartbreak. I've seen this happen time and time again and completely shatters the individual's confidence. What I'm gonna be offering to help people is a mentorship program mastering the art of selecting horses and learning how to develop your eye. With this program, you will learn how to develop independent knowledge and know what to look for. There are so many different topics to cover throughout this program, and it is gonna give you a toolkit that you can apply at auctions, private sale, or even in your own equine business when you're going to help other people select horses. This is such an important skill. Finding the wrong horse can be absolutely devastating or not knowing what issues to look for can also be concerning as well. In this mentorship program, I will be working with you exclusively, doing live coaching calls, giving you access to my entire virtual library and all of the knowledge I have when it comes to selecting horses. 
I've been doing this for years and I have learned so much throughout my experience and I wanna help other people learn to avoid mistakes that I have in the past as well. So if you're serious about learning how to find your dream horse or how to select suitable horses, then check out our mentorship program today. This program is for serious equestrians who really want to learn this art either on a professional or a personal basis. There is so much that goes into selecting a suitable horse. It's not just looking at them physically and visually, which is also a huge component, but it's about the connection and all of the ins and outs when it comes to purchasing a horse via auction or private sale. So if you're serious, apply today. I'm only taking a limited amount of individuals because I want to work closely with this group and mentor you throughout this entire process and help you reach all of your goals when it comes to selecting horses. All right, now I have Miss Bell. Just gonna groom her and we're gonna go for a little walk in the outdoor arena, walk over some poles. You see Gaston over there? <laughs> you pretty girl. You're dirty. Getting bigger, mama. You're all cleaned. Oops. Let's go to the outdoor arena. Mama Belle is a horse that I got from an auction in February and we discovered that she was pregnant for those of you who don't know and it was quite a surprise and I'm just glad that we did our due diligence and had her tested. So we don't know exactly when she was bred. Everybody is asking when is the foal going to arrive? Well, I don't know. We are thinking sometime this month or in June, but it could be next week or it could be July. So we will have to see. But as of now, we're just doing very light exercise, just walking on the lunge line at this point. I'm not asking her to trot. For those of you who don't know, we don't think she's broke to ride or anything. So of course, we're not gonna stress her with training, especially in her last trimester. But we get her out, groom her, spend time with her. I'll just have a lot of fun with her and walk her around and doing some light ground pulls. And then she goes out in the pasture and paddock with her friends all day. And then if I'm not around, I do put her in a private paddock just in case she were to full, but we do have cameras and everything set up for her. Okay, so we just did all of our serpentines um, in hand and that <laughs> we did the serpentines in hand and then we did the ground pulls too. I'm running out of battery, so I didn't record that part, but basically what I was doing with the other horses and she did great. She's super chill today. Can't wait for that little baby. Let's see if they're moving. Are they awake? Baby sleeping, maybe. See a little bit. It's cool. Now I'm gonna let the horses out in the pasture for a little bit, and then I'm gonna work with Buzz. This is Buzz Lightyear, my little cute pony, and we are gonna do some groundwork today. Little Buzzy B. Ready to go work? Ready to go do something? Buzz has honestly transformed into such a fun little pony. We have been doing so much. I, I'm very excited and he has some other big plans coming up, but we've been doing groundwork and Liberty. He's been jumping over tiny little jumps in hand on the lunge line. He does great with the poles. He's been doing some showmanship with the kids and he's also done some lessons like on the lunge line and pony rides. He's had some people ride him and then we're gonna be doing some driving training. And we also have some really fun things that are going to be coming up. And I'm going to be doing a video on him showing you all of these amazing things that he's going to be doing. Very busy little Buzzy Bee. He's been doing really well with the groundwork. He listens and I think he's in really good shape right now. I'm glad that he is not super fat and that he is fit for being a small pony. So that's really great. I work with him on a regular basis and conditioning him 
really helps. Plus, he gets to be out in the paddock with his friends, and that keeps him busy as well because he plays with Mushu and the others all the time. So it's super adorable. I'm glad that he's incorporated into the herd here and gets along with them. And his canter has gotten a lot better on the lunge line too. So I'm very proud of how far he's come in the short amount of time I've had him. I think I got him end of November. So yeah. All right, he did pretty good. He's a good boy. All right, horse lovers, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications so you don't miss anything Free Spirit Equestrian. And we will see you next time, horse lovers. Bye. You good boy. You good boy. <laughs> I hope you learned a little bit and enjoyed this day.